When Susan Desmond Hellman was chosen five years ago as the first female chancellor in the history of UC San Francisco, she was in charge of drug development at the biotech company Genentech. UCSF is renowned for cutting edge medical research, in addition to its various schools, including medicine, dentistry, and nursing. Desmond Hellman took over the $4 billion enterprise at a time of severe budget cuts. At the end of this month, she leaves UCSF to head up the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in Seattle. Chancellor Desmond Hellman sat down with Scott Schaefer to talk about her UCSF tenure and her future. Chancellor, welcome. Thank you. You came to UCSF from Genentech uh, almost five years ago now. You took over at a time of budget cuts and tuition increases and layoffs. What was the toughest part about taking over at that time? I felt as chancellor that first and foremost, we needed to bring, and I needed to bring, a sense of optimism and can-do spirit. We couldn't say, okay, stop teaching professional and graduate students, stop caring for patients, stop doing important research that's going to change the world. You, uh, of course, like uh, many administrators, were under harsh criticism, none more so than from State Senator Leland Yee, who, of course, is in the news this week, uh, being the subject himself of an FBI investigation and corruption. Um, what was the toughest part, the most unfair part, do you think, of of the criticism, not just from him, but from others on the regents or in the state legislature, the governor for that matter. A 23,000 person, $4 billion university does not run on its own gas. It needs leadership, it needs an administrative infrastructure to make things happen. And the best and brightest need to be compensated. I think a healthy debate on what should be the proper compensation for great leadership, I, I welcome a healthy debate. But there's also some political grandstanding that goes on. That's the most difficult for me. Um, as a leader of an institution trying to maintain excellence and doggedly every day pushing for that excellence, the ability to hire people and pay them what they're worth is good for the state, good for the university, and shouldn't be the subject of pandering. UCSF is in the future business. Uh, you're doing yes. research and thinking about the future, solving problems uh, for the future. Uh, but a few years ago, a couple years ago, you said that the financial model for UCSF was not sustainable and that the university was on a track to run out of or to go into the, into the red in 2015. Mm -hmm. And you talked about uh, changing the relationship between UCSF and the rest of the university system. Um, is that, what is the, what's the status of that? What I told the regents was really fundamentally a couple things. One is that it was in all of our collective best interests as a public institution. So there was no part of this that was any wish to break away from being public or a part of the UC system. This is not Crimea. This is not Crimea, no. In fact, it, what I um, believe is that UCSF allowed to unleash its entrepreneurial spirit is at its finest and that we needed to have a nimble governance so that we could make rapid decisions, change in two areas that are highly competitive, both our research enterprise, we compete for grants, and our clinical enterprise, we compete for patients. We're in the midst of implementing healthcare reform in this country. Is there a chance that institutions like UCSF are gonna really suffer because uh, the whole model of fee for service and uh, that's really being squeezed a bit with healthcare reform, isn't it? Our leadership anticipated that we would, no matter what happened with the uh, Affordable Care Act, we would need to lower our prices we would need to focus on access and we would need to change the way we operate from that fee for service to looking at safety, quality, affordability, very different for an academic medical center, but we need to do that while continuing to innovate, continuing to seek cures for diseases and continuing to be leaders academically. You know, we're in an, a new era with medicine with regard to genomics yeah. and genetics and uh, privatized medicine and all of that. Uh, how is that going to change medicine going forward, do you think? Well, one of the things I'm most excited about at UCSF is the concept of precision medicine. Uh, UCSF has been a leader in precision medicine. What does that mean? Precision medicine is a way of having all of what you mentioned, genomics, electronic health records, self-monitoring, the ability to use algorithms to seek information in data, what some people call big data, in whatever form it is, it may be an environmental exposure, family history, so it's not limited to your genes, but it is massive amounts of information about you being pooled with other information in a network of knowledge that can come back to your clinician to help care for you. So precision medicine should be more predictive. 
it should be more personalized and it allows us to focus more on prevention, seeing what will happen to you before it happens. You're leaving UCSF to become the CEO of the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation up in Washington, um, and, and they focus on global health, among other things. And there's been some concern expressed recently about rich guys like Bill Gates or Larry Ellison or Eric uh, Schmidt down at Google uh, deciding, spending a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars on research uh, and health issues that they find to be important. Um, and that in some way that could undermine sort of science for the common good. Do you have any concerns about, or, or what do you think of that criticism maybe is a better way to ask it? I am thrilled that Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett have decided to take their wealth and try and have all lives have equal value. I mean, that really resonates for me. I'm thrilled about that. Does that mean that um, no one should question or challenge the focus of the foundation or give input? Absolutely not. Don't be afraid of the questions. Don't be afraid of the questions and don't be afraid of the dialogue. And, and I, I believe, and being in San Francisco, being in California, I think it's in our DNA to believe that um, healthy, dialogue and debate brings better outcomes. All right. Chancellor Susan Desmond Hellman, thank you so much. Thank you.